Welcome to part 2 of our four-part series, Heaven is Beautiful, Near-Death Experiences of Rev. Peter Panagore. Rev. Panagore is an international best-selling author, professional speaker and widely renowned devotional broadcaster who has had two near-death experiences that profoundly affected him. On today's show he describes how his second NDE redirected his life. When I cause people pain, I now know that I'm going to be forgiven, which doesn't give me permission to hurt people, it's just the opposite of that. Knowing that God is all love makes me aspire to be the best that I can be. It m makes me understand that um, every time I love someone else or have an action of kindness, that um, it's an accumulation inside myself of the treasure of heaven. So I, in my body now, I reoriented my life completely. I changed the course of my career. I changed the class, the, the graduate program I was going to go into. I ended up going into ministry, which is a, from my point of view, a, a servant sort of living. It's a, a, a profession of compassion. And so I try to live as compassionately as I possibly can. I'm, I'm willing to stand up when I have to stand up to be courageous, but only in the servanthood of love, not for self-serving purposes. Reverend Panagore says that life here on earth is just an illusion. He next shares why he believes this is so. It seems to me that the body and the senses, the how we perceive the world, including our brain, is part of the veil itself. It's sort of, I, I like to use the, the metaphor of the Matrix movies, without the evil machine overlords, replace that with an all-loving divine. The whole universe is an illusion. It's a place where we live, but it's not what we are. And it seemed to me, it doesn't seem to me, it actually is to me, that the only reality is the divine itself. And when I say this universe, I mean from the Big Bang to the expanding edge and all the galaxies in between and all the star systems and every single molecule of dark and dark matter, everything, all of it, the whole thing is a place where we live. It's not who we are. It's not where we're from. We're in this container. The veil is this thing that both uh, enables us to experience the, the richness and fullness of life, but it prevents us also from perceiving more clearly the presence of the divine in all things. And so it's a uh, necessary to be here, but it also gets in our way. And what gives me real hope is that every single human being in the moment that they die, they're going to find this out for themselves. I don't really care if anybody believes me because they're going to find out, you're all going to find out for yourselves. And the, the length of life is, is the wink of an eye. That's what I saw was that the 20 years I had lived was that long. It's nothing in comparison to eternity. And that it was very, very clear to me that the only reality that there is, is the divine. And so I live my life through that truth which makes me, makes it a little more difficult to live in the world when my eyeball is always tuned into the divine and less so here. Reverend Peter Panagore has had two near-death experiences during his lifetime. 
In both instances, when he returned to life on Earth, he suffered through a long and difficult period of adjustment. My second near-death experience put me into a bit of a tizzy. Um, but yeah, when I first came back, I had no idea what this thing was anymore. When I first came back, I had to I had to figure out how to how to move my fingers and and feel and eat and and what it is to breathe and think and I felt like I was um, alien, a uh, stranger inside of a strange machine, and I knew that I was not this thing. The world seemed to me to be two dimensional and black and white in comparison to the the three dimensional beauty of of heaven. I was in a, a a flat cartoon, and I had a very difficult time trying to figure out what had happened to me because I didn't bring back all the knowledge that I had on the other side because my brain couldn't contain it. So my soul still knows much of it or all of it for all I know, but my brain can't contain it. And so I went through this period, an initial period of several months of trying to keep my mouth shut um, and trying to figure out exactly what had happened to me. Fortunately for me, I had begun meditation practice many years before, and I dove into my meditation thinking that that was the only way that I was going to figure out what had happened to me. I went into a long-term depression, probably 10 years of um, utter sadness and longing for the oneness of being. I know that I chose to come back, but I was very angry at God for having sent me back without more information because there was this roaring lion inside of me screaming at me all the time without language. Speak about this, tell about this. And I didn't have any language for it and I didn't want to talk about it. And I and all I wanted to do was die and go home again. And so it took a long time to readjust and I ended up going to divinity school, to an architecture school, to study mysticism. So I, I did a, an independent three-year study at Yale of the history of mysticism in the West and primarily Western culture in order to adopt or find language that I could structure around my experience. I dove inside myself. And I guess the biggest way that I learned to readjust was by diving interiorly. I found that Jesus was right, that if you seek heaven above all things, if you focus on the oneness of being, you get access to it. And so I wanted access to it. I wanted to strip away as much of myself as I possibly could to create a larger channel inside myself so that I could have access to the divine. Through meditative practices, I opened myself up to a rapture of grace. I lifted outside of myself and brought into the divine presence of the oneness of being and visions. I have visions of, of heaven and light. It's the power of the divine itself, uplifting me out of myself and sending me back to my body and giving me the gift of a series of gifts of reintegration, helping my feet be here. I, I, live, I live with one eye always on heaven and one eye here and one foot always in this world and one foot in heaven. And so my reintegration here is trying to, I, I still live mostly on the other side. It's trying to be in this world and pass or function as a normal human being. And that's been a, a journey for me. He tells us about the angel he met during his NDE. I um, refer to the intelligent being who, who plucked me out of my body as my, my friend, the angel of death. But not like an angel with wings, but an, an intelligence uh, that was beyond my capacity for understanding and a presence uh, that was both present to me in and of itself, but also a being that has divine direct connection to the wholeness of all. And it, when I died the second time in 2015 of a heart attack, the same angel of death came for me. 
Only this time, I knew the angel. I already knew what was going on. I was dying, and there's the angel of death. Come home, come home. It's your time to come home. It seems to me that that angel is always with me um, and never not with me and has always been with me. So I think that some people perceive angels and some people don't. Some people hear them. Some people are saved by them. Some people hear the, you know, don't turn left here and you don't turn left and a semi trailer truck misses you. That kind of stuff happens all the time. So I think that angels communicate with people. Many thanks, Reverend Peter Panagor, for sharing your inspiring story with us. For more information about Reverend Peter Panagor, please visit www.peterpanagor.love. Delightful viewers, thank you for your good company today.